Welcome back to another episode of From the Point by your favorite point. Brought to you by Sprite, the clear favorite. We are back on Bleacher Report. Got my guy Winston again with me. What up? Yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah. My boy. And now this episode, we're joined. Cut. cut. <laughs> you don't have to do that again. Let me give you some energy. Ah, ah, ah. Right, ah do it again. Ah. Do it again. All right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of From the Point by your favorite point. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, no, nah, so we here, we, we joined by, y'all obviously have heard it, the four-time NBA champion, three-time finals MVP, Hall of Famer, um, the legend Shaquille O'Neal. Appreciate you. Welcome to the show, Shaq. Hey, Shaq. man, first of all, look at me when you talk to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm message y'all all night, but I'm going to help y'all. For sure. Okay? Absolutely. Look up. Look who you're talking to. Look in the camera. Mm -hmm. The more views we get, the more money you get. Yes, sir. Right? Don't don't be nervous. I'm, I'm Shaq, but yeah. I'm a regular guy. Yep. He's my favorite player because him and Steph Curry does something I wish I can do. They're yep. some of the best shooters in the league. So don't be intimidated by everything I've done in my present. Right. Because this is your money. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know he got that NBA money, but he got two new beautiful babies at the house. You want to make all the money you can get. So mm -hmm. fuck them no cards. Yeah. <laughs> Speak from the heart and just yes, ask anyone. Don't be nervous. I I got your back. I'm gonna make us all look good. Man, that's right. great. That's great. Uh what's your name again? Winston. Thomas. All right, let's yeah. go, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> um Yep, I'm Thomas. Welcome to the show. But uh when did the when did the AW start? I think it was the twenty twenty one. Never what? never been a Hawk fan. Okay. Right. Played the game 19 years. I was a fan 19 years before that. Seen a lot of things. You don't really see what him, Steph, and Dame do on a consistent basis. Shoot from that far back. That's why Steph, him, and Dame, they're my favorite players. And he's made it very exciting to be a Hawks fan. So... You know, he's a hawk, and I, th I think that's the sound that the hawks make. Yeah. <laughs> and every yeah. time I watch him play, he's very exciting. So I'd just be trying to, you know, get people involved, let people know who he is. Because in this thing of virus, there's a lot of guys that's me, 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 me. But I done been there, done that, and got paid. It's time to pass the love. Mm -hmm. Trey is that guy in Atlanta. And I live in Atlanta. I want to show him and his family as much as support that I can. So awesome. when I do the the ah uh, thing, nobody was doing it, and it just brings you know attention to to him, brings attention to the Hawks. And whenever I do it, they win. So mm -hmm. you know, I played, I did a lot of things, but I was a guy that jealousy always made me go to the next level. When I first came in, when I was the first pick, this and that, but. You go around with Charles Barkley and the Jordan and the Magic and all the love that they got, makes you just a little bit, but then makes you say, okay, here I come. So when I watch him, Steph, and Dame, I wish I had that. And like, so when, when I'm on NBA 2K, I'm them. Mm -hmm. When I'm at the crib around my boys, I don't do dunks and do post moves. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, Trey, <laughs> Steph Curry, yeah. Dame Lilla. So, yeah. you know, it's just my love and support for him and the thing because he, he's one of my favorite players. Well, I, I appreciate that. I've always appreciated you showing me love. I know you recently just, they just announced that you're going to get your jersey retired in Orlando. Uh, I know that's where you started your career. You've, you made your name even more in other places, but that's where you started. So what does that mean, uh, getting your jersey retired in Orlando, where you started? I don't know if you know about my my high school career, but... When I first started out, I was the guy that wasn't good enough. So sophomore year, I got cut, wasn't good enough. Coach said I, uh, and, and I was living in Germany. I wasn't even in the States. Mm. Coach said, you're not good enough. But I'm the guy that I love to prove people wrong. So got back to the States, junior year, 35-1, 36-0, win the state championship. But what it taught me is that life is like goes up and down because I went from nothing to the number one player in Texas. Now when I go to LSU, it's a guy that's similar to him. His name was well, formerly known as Chris Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mahmoud Abdul-Rauf, his name. Shoot that thing just like him. So now I'm at the bottom again. But I had the blueprint on how to work hard. So uh, now I'm the number one player in college, the number one pick. Now when I get to the NBA, I come in at number 30, right? Even though I'm the number one pick, it's still guys ahead of me. So now I said, okay, so... It just knew I knew I had to work hard. I enjoyed working hard because I wanted that spot. 
So luckily when I got drafted by Orlando, they were not a good team. So I had the triple green light mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. So when you get the triple green light, I knew what to do with it. I knew I had to just keep getting better and keep getting better. And, you know, the business of basketball took over. I didn't finish my career there after four years. I decided to, you know, do something else. But for them to, to give me the call and say, hey, we want to retire your jersey, I think it's a wonderful thing. Uh, Dwight is probably next mm -hmm. if they do another one. But Penny Hardaway should definitely be in that conversation. But to, to be the first time my jersey retired with Orlando, I, th I think it's a wonderful thing because I knew I had to put in work. Like when I talk to the youngsters, I tell them, don't be satisfied when you reach your goal because there's more goals to reach. Like when I first got it, I was making 40 for seven. I was like, damn, I'm one of the highest paid players. And then Big Dog was talking about 100 million. I was like, man, I got to pick my game up. And then I got 100 million and I got another extension. I got another extension. So, you know, even though I emerged as, you know, one of the top young players, that that wasn't enough for me. You and Will Chamberlain are the only two players in NBA history to have your jersey retired. And that pissed three. me off. Why? Because, listen, we all like titles. I wanted to be the first. Like like I always tell people, when you talk about the greatest of all time, if I'm not unanimous, don't even bring it up. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, when, when when they talk about the most dominant, there's one or two names. I'm happy with that conversation, but it would be more empowering to me if they say Shaq was the most dominant player ever. Mm -hmm. see, like, and see, like him, when it comes to the greatest shooters, it's him and three other guys. I don't know how he feels about that, but... I never liked that. So when my mother told me the other day, she's like, baby, you're the second. I was happy, but I was pissed because I wanted to be the first. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I would have been the first unanimous MVP, but one guy gave one vote to another guy. So <laughs> yeah. Steph became the first unanimous. That's also pissed me off. But I'm happy about it. But when I played, I was always searching for titles because I like to because I like to stand alone. Do you think anybody else will, will achieve that feat? Maybe LeBron. Cleveland. Miami and in LA, maybe, yeah. LeBron, maybe. And you already mentioned Dwight is probably going to yes. be the next Orlando Magic, so that's great. Do you think it's long overdue? Um, I know they. It's always an honor for them to try New Jersey now, and whenever it happens. But I mean, I'm thinking of guys like Penny. I think of guys like you. Like I try not to complain a lot. You know how the business of basketball is. They're going to do what they want to do, and if they decide to do it. But if I have to solicit you to do something then really should it be done? Mm -hmm. Like when they talk about the top 75, if you have to state your case on why you're not top 75, my question is, are you really top 75? Mm -hmm. Again, I keep going back there. When they talk about the best shooters in the game, his name gonna always come up because right. he's one of the best shooters in the game. It ain't, uh, what about what about this guy? That, so, so like if you're on that side of the conversation, I never want to be on that conversation. It is or it isn't. And if it ain't, or if, if you have to think about it, don't even mention my name. That's a great point, actually. So you uh, you made it to the finals in year three, but didn't win your first ring until year eight. You talk about that medium, you know, what it took to get over the hump. What what did it take for you to get over the hump and take that next jump as a player and be able to lead your team to actually win a ring? Trey understands this. When you're the best guy, everything falls back on you. Mm -hmm. So my advice to him is to make sure he's always ready. Make sure he gets his guys ready. First championship, I take full responsibility for not being as ready because we celebrated too early. Everybody was scared of Michael Jordan. I was not. That's why I won thousands of dollars in bets. Who was the last per person to beat Michael Jordan? Nobody knows. Oh, he went six and all. I'm like, oh yeah, remember the year when he came off, when he took off and came back and they played us? I'm the last guy to beat him. So after we beat him, he was happy. And me, D. guy, we had about nine, 10 days off. We had a lot of meetings at Magic City. You know what Magic City is? <laughs> I do know what Magic yeah, City so is. Yeah, so we we, we 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 had 10 days off. And it's like, bro, we beat Mike. Yeah. We good. We about to take it. And we had played well against the King. So, you know, they won one, we won one. Wasn't intimidated. Him. Showed him probably too much respect in the finals, which is why he dogged me out in the finals. But I didn't know what it took to win a championship. And that's why I always said if I ever got back, I have to dominate. I got to do what I do. Like, okay, you're averaging 30 now, you got to bring it up to 40. You got to tuck that elbow in on the free throw line and, and, and at least shoot 60%. You're not going to shoot 78%. Right now you're shooting 50, but down by one, we need this free throw. So I had to step up as a player. I had to make sure everybody else was ready. And uh, it was something that I, 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 I wanted. So, you know, when, when you're that guy, Trey, you got to take, take, it, take it upon yourself to make sure it gets done every time because 
when we do well, we get all the credit. When we don't do well, that's our fault. And then they start mm-hmm. talking nonsense, like trading us. And like, it's just, the business of basketball is very, very difficult. But if you have that leader mentality, you have to do it your way and do it the correct way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'll, I feel like it'll ultimately work out like it did for you. Uh, I hope that that's how it works out for me. But for me, that's, before we get into the Lakers, like if you had to judge your version of Shaq and Magic, your version versus L.A. Shaq. What do you think the pros and cons for both of them were? What was better? The Shaq in Orlando was a runner. That's because I used to get the ball. Penny was a pass first guy. When I got to L.A. and guys, you know, wanting to do their own thing, rightfully so, had to slow it down a little bit and, you know, just say, okay, you know, so when you get the ball, do your thing, mm-hmm. right? When I get down here, make sure I get to do my thing. Uh, the L.A. Shack was more dominant, more focused, had better help around me, and the general didn't panic. What I mean by the general is, and, and like I always say this on TNT, if the general doesn't panic, which is the coach, mm-hmm. then the players won't panic. Because I've been in a situation where coaches don't know what mm-hmm. to do, and then Phil was like, nope, I'm not calling the timeouts. You guys figure it out. And he treated us like men. And he let us figure out. And I had another dog next to me. That's not I'm not gonna right. sit here and act like I did it by myself. I had a I had a dog next mm-hmm. to me who wanted to who had the same mentality that, that I had. And when I'm gonna average forty, he he was gonna try to average thirty nine. So that's seventy nine points right there. So mm-hmm. if you get that and then you get everybody else stepping up. We were we were supposed to win and we did win. And that growth as a player, I'm sure you had people in your ear both on and off the court that were very difficult of you, that were very challenging of the player that you were trying to become. Um, you have been that for a lot of guys now in the league too. You've been critical of Zion. You've been critical of Donovan Mitchell, Joel Embiid. What type of responsibility do you feel as an ex nba or that's still around the game to be able to See, only, advise these guys? Only a negative person would look at it as critical. But if you know who you are, you should look at it as information. Mm-hmm. And I've said this the, the, the many times. Like if I look at him and say he shouldn't have took that shot, he's either going to say, okay, I'm going to keep taking it and make it this time or shut you up or he's going to listen to what I'm saying. Like, you know what, maybe I should step in. Mm-hmm. Not making fun. Don't need to make fun. When I give you information, I'm giving it to you raw. I'm giving it to you like I would give it to you if we was playing. If I was playing with him and he took a crazy shot while I'm in the post, I would say, Trey, don't take that shot, right? Mm-hmm. But again, as a player, you know who you are. Shaq, shut your ass up. Watch this. You hit five in a row, I can't say nothing. Right. Or you listen to what the big man is saying who's won four championships say, you know what, maybe he's right. So a negative person will look at it, oh, he's hating. I can't hate. I'm giving you information. What, I, what I've always learned about criticizing, especially from players that's been there and done that, if you've been there and done that, I will listen to you, right? And if you do criticize me, I will look, I will listen to that and see if there's some truth into that. Mm-hmm. Like Shaq could be one of the greatest players ever, but he was a terrible free throw shooter. He can't. Can't be mad at that. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I averaged 40 and Jordan averaged 39. I did that, but there's some truth into what you're saying, so I really can't get mad. So I learned that. When I was in LA, I was putting up big numbers. And they asked Kareem, Kareem, what you think about Shaq? And Kareem said with a straight face, yeah, I think I, I know y'all think he's a great player, but is he a really great player? They ain't winning. How can I get mad at that? That's Kareem. So when I say something with the G14 classification I had, can't be hate, because I've been there and I've done everything that you guys are trying to do. It's really information. So when I say, I watched Zion, he wasn't running, he wasn't trying to get easy points for himself, and he wasn't trying to take LeBron's spot. A lot of times I, I try to put myself in, in the mindset, and, and listen, we all have the same mindset. Like when Trey see a guy come and guard him one-on-one, we all got the same mindset. This motherfucker can't guard me. <laughs> Give it to him. So when I'm sitting there in Vegas and all that thing going on, I'm saying to myself, Zion going to say, you know what? Forget you, LeBron. This shit is mine now. And I didn't see that. And I mentioned it. So they may think it's, it's, it's criticism and hate, but it's information. But do you think do you think every legend like you thinks like that? No. And I, and I think a lot of legends don't have a, to, to have the, the capability and the classification to say what they say. I agree. So I can understand why y'all are mad, because I used to get mad. Like, like Charles, love him, a great player, but how do you know? what it takes to get to the big dance and win. You don't. 
and that's no disrespect. So I'm not going to listen to you. So again, yeah. it, 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 it depends on how it's said and how you say it. But me, I don't have room to hate, brother. I got too yeah. much stuff to do. But when I see somebody that I like, I respect, I'm going to say it how it was said as if we were on the same team. Well, that's, that's how I feel. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm the first person to tell somebody that I don't know it all. And I, I'm, although I'm, I've made, I've done a lot of things in my career, I haven't achieved the best things and the highest things, but I know I still got a lot to improve and a lot to show, but I can still learn some things. But you can also hear the hate in some of some old school and some legends voice. And even though like the, they can be some of the best players ever, it's, it's, you can still sit, hear it a little bit in their yeah, voice. Yeah, but I, I always say it from a place of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have, to keep, you have to understand the same thing I would tell you in your face. Because mm -hmm. it's all about respect. Trey, I don't like that shot. Don't mean I'm hating on him. I don't like the shot, Trey. You the guy on the team, but that was like, I understand you can hit a 30 footer, but that was 35, my guy. Mm -hmm. right. Bring that shit back to where you <laughs> shoot from. Like, dude, right. Bro, we down by one. Right. Right. I, I ain't, I'm yeah. not telling you not to do what you do, but that's 35 feet, mm -hmm. dog. Bring that shit to 30 or 32 or 33. Yeah. The same thing I would tell him as a friend, as a brother. So, yeah. that, so like when I say something that sounds like hate, you should slow it down and listen to what I'm saying. People think I hate Dwight. For what? Yeah, I don't, I don't I'm see I'm saying, it. bro, you got to average 28 and 10 to be dominant. Right. And then if you do that, then it ain't no no question on, yeah. on whether you're top 75 or not. Yeah. If you do that and play like this, you're top yeah. 75. Right. It ain't no why, conversation. Why do you think some of your peers are like that, though? I, like Because you know what? Be honest, they need this shit. Mm. They need it. Okay. They need to be, be feel, they, they They need to be heard. Mm -hmm. They want people to know that they're important. I don't need to be important. I'm either important or I'm not. Yep. But I'm not going to go overboard to say, hey, I'm important. You, you, you either think Shaq's a dominant big man or you don't. Right. And I'm not going to be doing stuff to, to prove that I am. Either you know or you don't. Mm -hmm. So when I used to hear criticism, I used to say, okay. And I used it as motivation. And it helped me. I, I love being criticized because I'm, I'm, I have the ability enough to slow down time and read what you said. And if there's some truth in it, okay, watch it. Like, oh, file them. File them. Every now and then, motherfucker goes six out of 10, mm -hmm. seven out of 12, nine out of nine. Like, okay, you're going to file me because you think I, I, okay, watch this. And, every, it, it just, and it helped me win four championships. So, you know, a lot of these players should take the criticism and, and turn it into motivation. Sound like you. Yeah, I, I mean, me and, me and Shad don't have a lot of similarities as far as our game, but I feel like, I mean, our mentality and from just hearing you speak and from years going, we have a lot in that, in that eyes. But going over to this big man alliance, I know you have guys that you put in your your little list of your big man alliances and you consider them in this list. Like, I know you put the Joker in it as far as the day's game. Is there any other guys that you see, I mean, in today's game that you could put in there or have the capabilities of being on their way? Joker, Embiid. Bo Bo, but he's lazy as hell. Man, he has so much talent, man. Mm, he's lazy. But you yeah. know, people try to jump on me when I when they said I was comparing him and Wimby. I was not comparing him and Wimby. Like like I, I tell like Charles and, and Reggie all the time, relax. <laughs> relax. Relax. Like Wimby did something and he's seven five. Very talented player, not hating him at all. Really good. But he wasn't the first to do it. Bo Bo was the first seven foot guy, five guy to bring it and, and do it with style. Because a lot mm -hmm. of, like, for example, mm -hmm. no, no disrespect, Clint Capella could dribble, but it don't look like how, how the ass look. Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So Bo Bo was the first to do it with style. You know, social media going to change around, compare him, not compare him, just saying he was the first. Mm -hmm. Wimby's in there. And so it's, it's only four because I like, I like big guys that demand attention, mm -hmm. big guys that can play. And I know the game is different. The game is different now. Like, I, I, I wish I could shoot. I wish I had the ability to do a Joker and be the like I, I'm, I'm I'm jealous of those guys because as much as you talk about me, I didn't have that. I, if I had that, uh, I think I'd have been a much more exciting player. So th 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 those four, but Bo Bo, I don't know what it is. Like I I, I, I coached him one game for AAU, and I, I had him doing stuff I've, I've never seen a guy his size can do. That's why I know firsthand. I know what he can do, but. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't get out and do it. But Wimby, 
he played you guys last night. He, mm-hmm. he was impressive in the second mm-hmm. half. He was. Very, very impressive. He was. Pivoting that a little bit, if there was a guard alliance, one, who do you think would be in I like that? all shooters because you know why? I've seen all that. I've seen the handle. I'm, bro, I've been around this game a long time. Stuff that him, Dame, and Steph do, I ain't seen that. And it's consistently. You, you can hit a, you can hit one 35-footer or 40-footer, but they do it all the time. They do it too much sometimes. Yeah. But mm-hmm. a lot of time it goes in and makes the crowd go crazy. So, you know, the way I, I look at those, that they're in like a different category. Mm-hmm. So I don't, like, I wouldn't put like, Luca and Kyrie, and that's no disrespect to those guys. They're similar game, but you're asking me, so this is the, what Your I say. Yep. Those three, some of the you know top guards in the game. There's a lot of young guys that are doing the thing, but I enjoy stuff that I haven't seen before, and I, I haven't seen guys do it like that consistently and as long as they've been doing it. Have been doing it a long time. Long time. Well, no, nah, I mean it's been a blessing doing it for. I got a question. How the hell you can shoot from that deep, but I can't? I, I know I, I know I'm stronger than you. But like, I'd be at the house. I'm like, I'll be shooting it's, the air ball. It's like, it's like football players. You can't lift all them weights and then just expect. No, but like the ball weighs how much? I, don't, I think it's two pounds, something Bro, like that. Bro, when I'm at the house and trying to shoot from that deep, it's air ball city and you and <laughs> y'all like little guys. I'm like. No, nah, it's touch. It's touch. Oh, make me so mad. It's touch. But, uh. Out of all your years with the Lakers, I mean, everybody knows those years and from watching you and Cole play, what was your favorite What was your favorite championship year? Probably the first one because after all we've been through with Phil, we almost let it slip away. And I can remember in the fourth quarter, Phil's a genius. Because, you know, he came and he said, all right, guys, let's just finish this game out, come back next year and try. And we were like, what? And then we... Collectively, Cole like nah. This is the championship. Like no, this is the game seven versus Portland. Okay, we were down. Mm-hmm. I think fifteen okay. to seventeen points. He came. He said, "All right, guys. Uh, hey, you, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. Shaq, you got MVP and Prime, but we're not gonna win this game today. Let's just play it out. See what like he was. He was. He was like testing us to mm-hmm. see if we wanted to quit. Cole was like, nah. You know, Cole. Nah, mm-hmm. I ain't going out like that. And then I wasn't having a really good game, but I know that. You know, if you're playing terrible and you keep playing, you can pick it up. Like, I'm never going to stop. Like, I'll go zero for, for 40 before I'll, I'll give up. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, all I need is two or three jump hooks to fall, and I'm going to get back on track, right? And then, you know, the others, who I call, everybody stepped it up. So we just kept, cut it to nine, cut it to ten. I shoot a baseline jump hook. Kobe does what he does. And I'm telling Kobe the whole game, hey, when you get to the rim, instead of doing all that, I'm right there. I'm right there. And and that play that everybody talks about, he crossed Pippen up mm-hmm. and he threw it up. And he threw the motherfucker up too high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he threw it up too high. But I'm I'm stopping time. If I miss this and we lose, it's going to be my fault. Fuck that. Go get that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Count that motherfucker. Threw it down. So now, <laughs> this game over. So now, yeah. remember what I told you earlier? Yeah. Okay, I got two days off. I'm getting fucking 40 yeah. in the game one in the finals. I don't yeah. give a fuck who we play. Yeah. Get, so mm-hmm. I was able to to take that moment and get back. So that, that was a good one. And then, you know, us as athletes. All right, you got one. Can you get two? All the motherfuckers who didn't have mm-hmm. G14 classification. Mm-hmm. And they still wasn't giving me my props. Oh, you almost lost that game. Oh, and, and, and you know, even though you won your first championship, you wasn't playing against somebody. All right, I'm going to get another one. And we win number two. And the same fucking thing. I'm like, okay, yeah, you got two. And Cole and Shaq arguing, can they get three? I'm like, okay, now I got to get three. So, you know, all that stuff that they said and the guys who didn't really have the G14 classification say, all that stuff that they were saying, instead of knocking people out every time I say them, I said, okay, I'm about to shut you the fuck up. Yeah. I'm, about to, I'm, I'm about to make you say my name with some respect. And I urge you to start doing the same thing. You ain't mm-hmm. got to go back and forth for people and get it. And if you get mad, keep that shit right there. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times I say stuff just to test people out. Like the fact when I said that stuff about Zion and he didn't get mad shows me he's not ready yet. He'll be ready. He's still young. But I seen him play mad in high school. I, I saw one clip where they had a guy his size guarding him and he took that shit personal. He, he had about 90 ducks. So a lot of times when I say stuff, it may sound crazy. But if you know me as a person, I'm not that guy. I want everybody to eat. Mm-hmm. Because these guys are eating good now. Oh, I'm Man. so jealous of these guys making 200, 350, but it's a good feeling to have all that. So 
if I see something, you're not doing it. And you know I played at that high level. I'm going to throw it out there. But I'm not going to always go and be like, Trey, you're mm -hmm. taking a bad shot. Trey, stop shooting that you shit. You know, baby him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Trey, man. You know, like, but it's it's coming from, you know, a place of love. And the the dog that I know he is, he's not going to he gonna be like, all right, Shaq, watch this, and come back and shoot that motherfucker mm -hmm. again and make it. Or he's going to listen to me and, and just come in a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that this is what I urge players to be. Stop being sensitive because I know what I'm talking about. And you know I know what I'm talking about. But I, I try not to. I'm, I'm going to try to do a better job of not making it sound like I'm embarrassing them. Nah, man. Nah, you ain't got to. You ain't got to stop. Thank you. I, I feel Appreciate like that. I feel like, nah, because Cause. The real ones get it. Like I feel like the the best players Zion. respond. Like Joel responded. Like I yeah. feel like Whew. And he's an MVP. Man. You know what I'm saying? Dominating. And oh. you've been you were talking about him before he was the MVP. So it's like it's it's just about the best players gonna respond. So I mean, if you don't respond when a you can tell a legend is giving you advice to only help you, that's on them. You shouldn't feel sorry about. You know they need to understand. This. I don't have to hate, brother. I'm, I like all <laughs> yeah. the stuff you're doing. I'm yeah. passing it on because because I got it from Mike and Magic and those guys and bro I, I can't make all the money so if I can help you get two fifty to five hundred I'm gonna help you brother. Do you think there's a reason why the dynamic among current players has changed to be a little bit more sensitive to to what you would you would not call criticism but other people view it as oh he hating or or so whatever. If, if you're not if you if you've never been that good and you got a podcast now and you're talking greasy that'll never be taken respectfully. Right. Like some of these cabs that podcast, I'm like, come on, bro, mm -hmm. you wasn't that good. Like, like, don't talk like you was that guy. I was that guy. Mm -hmm. I can talk like this. Mm -hmm. See, you have to understand about me. If I'm not that guy, I'm not gonna talk like I was that guy. But you know, yeah. I was that guy. So I'll say it. But again, I, I say it like as if, if as if you're my boy, as if you're my teammate. Like if I gotta embarrass you, I'm not gonna embarrass you here. When I see you, I'm gonna say something to you. That's the type of guy I am. So mm -hmm. if, if if I mention your name, it means I love you and respect you. Mm -hmm. Like I used to love Dwight. He he did something I couldn't do. I wish I could jump that high. I love Dwight Howard. A lot of people don't know that this is my first time saying that. So, but as a big brother, I ain't going to let my little brother slide. So I want you to be better than me. So yep. like a lot of people who don't understand this thing of ours, they think it's, it's hate. No, it ain't hate. I'm telling you how to get here. Yeah, You know I'm here, dog. I'm uh -huh. telling you how to get here. If you don't want to get here... That's on you. And, you know, and, and, and that's why I kind of had to, like, you know, lay off them a little bit. Yeah. But. Yeah. You describe a mentorship. And I think that's something that we obviously talk about all the time of people that we look up to in our lives. That's on the court and that's off the court, too. I know you've you have your hand in a bunch of different things off the court. This is some we're we're both starting. Trey is really uses platform to to control his own narrative. And what advice would you give Trey as he's kind of starting to explore the marketplace a little bit? outside of basketball. I will always tell Trey, one, I call it single hand stress. So let me give you an example. My mother, my kids, my boys, my organization, my money. I don't give a fuck about what they think. See, right now it's too much information being spread and too many people have the word. If it don't make sense, don't care. I made this quote off for my kids. If a nobody can influence a somebody, then the nobody wins, mm. right? But the question of the day is, who the fuck are you? Nobody. If you can't shoot from 10 feet, don't tell him mm -hmm. how right. to fucking how shoot, shoot from yeah. 10 feet. right? I don't want to hear it. Mahmoud abdul Rauf could give him some advice. They're in that <laughs> same category. I can't, right? But I know a good shot, bad shot, mm -hmm. I can say it's the bad, but mm -hmm. I can't tell him about his front. No. Be quiet. So my advice to him is listen to those people, your wife, your family, right? Second of all, do it your way. Do it your way. Because if you do it their way and it doesn't work out, you're still going to get the blame. If you do it your way and it doesn't work out, you can live with that because now you can go back and say, maybe I need to do this and I do that. Yeah. Whenever I did it my way, I will win. Whenever I did it their way, I end up getting traded. So just do it your way, continue to play, and continue to better yourself. And I don't know what motivates him, but jealousy always motivated me. Like right now, he's two or three. I would I would be upset at that. Like for example, I'm not trying to disrespect him, but I think Steph is a better shooter than him. I don't know how he feels about that, but if I was him, I'd be like, all right, Shaq, watch this shit. So I, I would always take stuff like that to just to just get me going. And like when you when you have that mentality, it 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 will definitely drive you. And when it's all said and done, 
your name will be talked about in definite. It's not who's the better shooter. I like I, I know him. Like first time I seen him, like I knew who he was, but I saw when he went back to the crib and some cat was challenging him and he fucking embarrassed that cat. This clip right here. That's for your editors. See that? <laughs> yeah. That's when I knew he had some dog. Yeah. I like him. Because, like, he, he he coming back to show the town love and this cat who's not even in the league uh-huh. talking that shit, and he shut the motherfucking gym down. I said, oh, yeah. he's one of us. We <laughs> bring him over here. He, he's one of us. Met his parents, talked to his dad, know who his dad was. Did my research, see how he grew up. I like this motherfucker Trey right here. I, ah, every time I see him. So I know when I jump on him, I know he knows what, he knows how to decode it. What would you say motivates you the most? I mean, he... Shaq mentioned like about about that name, you know what I'm saying? Like making sure you like you represent your name. Like for me, my grandpa who passed when I was ten years old is who I prayed before, talked to before every game I step on the court. Like I'm representing not only the city and this organization and all my fans, but my last name. So like I wanna represent it the right way and I know I mean, I wanna win championships like that that's only going to enhance that last name, enhance my family, enhance everything around me. So that's what motivates me is just making sure I protect my last name and making sure I represent it the right way. Aside from, you know, off the court and all that, this broadcast thing is new for us too. We're, we were about, what, six months into podcasting? Um, you've been in the game for a while now. What what advice would you give? I don't want to give you Troy. any advice. You're doing a beautiful job. Thank you. So even though it's broadcasting, it's not. Just be yourself. We already got too many broadcasting shows. Nobody wants to see that shit. Mm. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. Like the podcast world is a great world because it gives regular people a chance to, you know, everybody can't be Ernie. Everybody can't be Adam Letko, but they give us the lane to be ourselves. Don't, bro, you seven cameras, you're a crew. Do what the fuck you want to do. Yeah. People are either going to like it or they don't. But don't, I don't, I don't, I don't give advice. It, it may sound like I'm giving advice. I'm not really giving you advice. I'm just giving you clues. But I'm not a podcast expert. That ain't my lane. Like, I got mm-hmm. a podcast very successful, but I'm not the podcast king. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not Pat McAfee, though, guys. So if you want to get an information guy that has 100 million subscribers, you could probably ask him this question. But I don't step mm-hmm. outside my lane. Mm-hmm. Basketball shit, I'm that guy. But yeah. this thing right here, I, I think it's a beautiful show. That's why I did it. I did it because my guy right here, he's my guy. And if I can help you guys in any way, go viral and, and get more views and get more money, I'm, that, that's what that's what you're supposed to do as over the player. Dr. J did that shit for me. Mm-hmm. Dr. J and Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan and Barkley is like, young fella, come on in. So that's what I try to do for fellas. So I don't have no advice for you. Your shit's beautiful. And whoever don't like it, fuck them. I know for me, like I, I can't get off this, this show without asking you about one of my favorite players, Kobe somebody who I was able to talk to and meet a couple of times growing up as a kid. I know you have a lot of memories. What was one of your favorite memories as as a teammate with him? So all the stuff I do now with players, I did with him. Not saying that I made him great, but when you got a dog, you agitate him. Mm-hmm. When you got a killer pit bull, you don't pet him. You piss him off and make sure he stays that pit bull. So all the stuff I'm doing now is what I did with him. And it worked for him. So if it worked for him, hey, I'm trying to, mm-hmm. motherfucker, you shooting too much. Motherfucker, you doing this. Motherfucker, this ain't your team. This my shit. Like, it's just a, because I need him, right? And again, I already know what I'm going to do because I don't want my fucking bums talking shit. I'm giving you 28-10, yeah. period. Free throws or not, that's what I'm doing every night. I don't want y'all talking that shit about me. <laughs> what the fuck you going to do, Trey? You ain't going to do shit tonight. Motherfucking Atlanta's my city, right? It's just to keep him mm-hmm. going, yeah. and it worked. So, because remember, you know, Kobe wasn't always Kobe. Like, when he came in, he was a young guy, and he had to be molded. So those first three years, carry my bags. You ain't going to be like it. It just fucking drove him crazy. <sighs> and he wanted to be great. He wanted to be better than me, which you're supposed to do. He wanted to be better than Mike. And it just kept going, and boom, 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 boom. Like, a lot of people ask me, what would you do different? I wouldn't do nothing different. Because it would be a better story if we didn't win any. Man, they couldn't get along, but it's not about getting along. It's about you doing your job, my doing my job, us making sure the others do our job, and we win championships. We won three out of four. I wouldn't do nothing different. Mm. You know, the reason why I got traded, not because we were having problems, because they wanted me to take less money. That ain't going to happen. 
That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, but me being the marketing guy I am, I made it, I don't fuck with you, but it's not, it's not like that in real life. And as a leader of the team, that's what I had to do to get him going. I don't want to be nice to that kid, you, you, but so he, but he had it all. And what I liked him about him because I'm the guy I used to do my thing. I'm not the, I'm not the guy that practiced seven hours a day. I don't need to. Like I hear a lot of people say, well, if Shaq would have worked out hard, I would have been what? I'd have been fucking Shaq, motherfucker. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. the, I'm gonna give you the same mm-hmm. outcome. Would have been right. me, but I'm not the guy that's gonna work seven hours because when I step on the court, I already know you can't guard me. I already know you can't guard me, so I'm not doing no extra working out. I'm coming into camp out of shape because I know I'm going to play back in shape. And by the <laughs> end of the season, the playoffs, I'm busting your ass anyway. I don't care who I'm playing. But he was the guy that, right? And I knew that. So it was my job to make sure he always played at that level. And what I loved about him most is, especially like when we came to Atlanta, motherfucker, I'm going out. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna start off slow, Cole. Go ahead, you take it. And like he he wanted it, so I'm like, Cole. I would come in and say, Cole. And a hundred out of a hundred times, Cole, I need forty. <laughs> Boom. Like the last game, I, we was messing around. I said, Cole, I need fifty. Motherfucker went out and got sixty. He been doing that since not eighteen, since twenty years old. And I knew that, like you know, if I if I needed him, we can do it. But I'm not the guy. He he doesn't respond to nice. He responds like, well, fuck it, this, this is my shit. And I knew it, it ate him up a lot, but that was my tactic to keep him going. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that and don't understand that. But from the outside looking at all oh, they didn't get along, we got along enough to win three out of four. So mm-hmm. what the hell are you talking right. about? Got all the Look, yeah. when I got double, I'm looking for him. Mm-hmm. And when he crossed up, he at the top of the key, he looking for me for the love. And that's what it's all about. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know how you and your teammates are, but... The respect always have to be there, bro. I'm, I'm not going out. When I go to a city, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do by myself. I'm right. going to a hookah bar, <laughs> going to a movie. I ain't trying to eat dinner at bro. I just saw you practicing on the plane ride. <laughs> Get away from me. But on that court, yeah. double team, Rick Fox. Double team, big shot by you had to show the respect. So, you know, a lot of people who don't know, really know our story, they, they're going to always say, oh, but no. But I, the same things I'm doing with these players now is the exact same thing I did with him. I egged him on to where a point he was so pissed off at me. Mm-hmm. But it worked out in everybody's favor. It definitely did. It definitely did. It definitely did. There are some common questions that I feel like the fan, myself, like you said, you you have You're that G4. Player. But you but you have that general, <laughs> you know, G14 classification that I'll never have. So I'm still a fan of the game. I'm I'm happy to say that. I'll always be a fan of the game. What is one common misconception about today's game that you don't feel like the fan behind the scenes understands? I think a lot of us, including myself, we wanted to be like when we played. I have to accept that it's different. I don't like all you guys running the same pick and roll play. That bothers me, but it's how it is. Mm -hmm. We got to respect it. We got to expect it. So I try to get away from it, but it's, it's just different. I played an era where the flagrant fouls y'all are getting were not flagrant fouls. So a lot of us, we think it's soft, but we have to get away from that. I realize it's, it's not, it's, it's their time. It's not our time, and we have to get away from that. And, and I'm going to try. But, you know, the fact that the, that the big men are up there when it comes to the, the MVP category, that makes me happy. But as a fan, I, I don't like watching 2017s run the same pick and roll, dribble handle. I, I don't like that, but we have to accept it. Yeah. The game was definitely different back back in the day. Like, no, nah, I mean, for me, like I I appreciate you coming on. Anything man. for you, my guy. Like you, you mm-hmm. a legend, and you know we. And always, I'm gonna stay on you only because I love you. I already know. Okay, cool. Like, I'm if, I got some, everywhere. if I got some personal say, I got your number, but it ain't gonna never be like that. But if I, because again, we we are both in the same category. The shit go bad. They're looking at you. They're not looking at Clint. They're not looking at Dejounte Murray. They're looking at the man. And the day you accept that is the day your game gonna be even better. So you have to lead them. You have to play great every night. Which you, know, you can't have no games off, and you just gotta, you just gotta do what you do. Well, one thing that I always, I mean, I've already taken from you, and you ain't even told me. It's just from listening to you. Is great players can't have two bad games in a row. Never. And um, I mean, never, I've had, never. And uh, so that's that's something I've I've always thought about, and there's. Constant things. So I'm yeah. always listening to you, so I appreciate it. And don't make people change your game. Just tighten it up. 
Like, I don't mind you shooting 35 foot long, the motherfuckers go in. Yeah, yeah, I don't go in, Trey. Bring that yeah. shit to 29, 28, 29. That, that's all. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Man, this is amazing. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you anytime. From the point. Much yeah, props I'll to do, you. I'll do the outro later. Yeah. Man, forget it. <laughs> like, yeah. this is, this Luka is so dope. Luca Doncic, man. look at my <laughs> This is so dope. I yeah, appreciate you, man. On the Thank point, you. by your favorite point, we out. Peace. <laughs>